Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting After Effects tutorial. My name is Vijan and today I will be showing you guys how to make pretty cool um, jet scenes using Element 3D and Jet Strike in After Effects. So let's just get started. Um, I'm going to show you the basics like what I do to make mine. So um, we're going to start, we're going to make a new composition. I'll just call it Jet. And then it'll be 1280 by 10. Uh, sorry, 1920 by 1080p because that's the resolution of my new screen and my new computer. Um, and then yeah, okay. So we're gonna come in here. We're gonna create a new solid by clicking um, Control Y or go to Layer New Solid. Um, doesn't matter what color you make it. Just make sure it's the same size as the screen. Um, we'll come to Effects uh, and Presets and we'll type in Elements and get our Elements effect and put it on top of the solid and now you can see that it went black because the background is black and now it made it transparent. We're going to go into scene setup, go to our jet strike and let's see what we can find in here. Um, I think I'll use spider jet number two which is a pretty cool looking model. Um, I really like this model and now we're, we'll go to environment, we'll change the environment to aerial four and then I'll press OK because that's the one I'm using and then we can turn on the environment and now it will like things like the uh, cockpit it will reflect based off the environment and it'll look more realistic so that's basically that we'll press OK now we have our model in here we can come here and we can go to our project and I'm going to use an aerial photo from the jet strike pack and it's basically just a photo from the sky and nothing really special. I'm sure you can find something on Google, just the ones that came with Just Strike are pretty nice as well. So I'm going to use that instead. I'm going to create a new camera by coming into Layer, New Camera. I'll make it at 80 millimeters, um, just because that's what I want right now. Um, and then I can use the pan, the camera pan tool right here, or the unified camera tool to move around my uh, jet around the scene so that I can get the best what it, what it would look like in this shot. For example, it wouldn't look like this because this is from the bottom of the plane and this is showing the top of the clouds. So maybe something like that would work a bit further back. Uh, I guess that's good. And then now we can come to our aerial photo and we can parent that to our uh, white, no, to our camera. And by doing that now, our background moves with us as we pan around this plane. So now you can see that it becomes, um, it shows a black background when you come too far around the edges. So we're just not gonna go too far out the edges. Even if you come like this far, it kind of reverses the effect and it messes itself up. I don't know how to fix that, but it won't be a problem for us really. So right now, I will come here and where was it? Uh, camera. I'll press P to open up the position. I'll keyframe it and go ahead six or eight seconds. I'll just do six. And then I will move my camera to where I want it to be. So now I want to keep it in bounds, not going out. I'll go like this. And then now we can show, we can see how in the video it starts panning the camera. Now I'm going to actually shorten my clip here because this is how long the clip actually is. So now you can see that this is basically what we got going on so far. And it looks pretty good, just the fact that it looks kind of fake. Um, so let's see. Yeah, that's basically it. Now, just to add a bit of um, detail to it, I'm going to turn on motion blur and then put motion blur on to the white solid, which is our uh, element layer. And then um, hopefully that makes it look better. I don't know why it's slower now. For now, I'll take turn that off. Anyways, now we can start doing the cool stuff that makes it look good. So now I'm gonna actually exit out of this. I'm gonna make, select everything in our jet composition and press pre-compose, and then I'll call this uh, yet I don't know original. Now we'll press OK, and then now we have this whole composition to work with. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go under position for the composition and then I'm going to make this look realistic as if it was being filmed from another jet or something like that, another plane. I'm going to um, look at the stopwatch, I'm going to hold alt and click the stopwatch and this brings up our expression controls. Now I'm going to type in a small command, wiggle 
7.5 and I'll use 7 for now. But basically what this does is that it tells the camera um, or the composition to start moving around at this random rate between 7.5 and 7 pixels I believe. So now you can make it higher, you can make it like, I don't know what would happen if I made it like 100, that's pretty, pretty crazy. But yeah, that gets, gets really hectic. So I'll keep it as this for now. But now when you notice that it has these little black lines around because it's moving the actual composition. So uh, it, show, it reveals the background whenever it moves up or down. So what we can do to fix this is we can go to our effects and presets and type in motion tile and um, find motion tile and you can drop it down onto your um, what is this, the composition that you pre-composed and then you can come here and you can mirror the edges. Now what this does is that it um, allows you to copy what's here onto this side so that it looks better. And now nothing's changed but that's because we have to change the widths. So I'll just change it to 120 by one uh, and 120 so the width and height. And now you can see that these have been covered up. Now when it goes through you can see that there's no black lines anymore and that's because we added the motion tile which got rid of the which basically duplicated the image onto the other side which made it look realistic so that's basically what we have for this now some other things I like to do to make it look realistic is I like adding um, black solid and trying to make it widescreen even though like you can do this with um, actual like video editing software after you bring it in because sometimes you don't do them all the exact same way so all your shots have different sized um, widescreen bars but for now just for this one shot I'll do this um, I'll make them relatively the same size it looks pretty good right now still something makes it it still looks pretty CG so what I'm going to go do is I'll go into our actual shot and I will turn off our camera for now or no, that's okay. We'll leave the camera on. I'll come to the layer, go to new light, and then we're going to start making the light um, make the plane illuminated. So we're going to come pick the color of the clouds. I'll make this a um, 50 intensity, and I'll make it an ambient light. And so now all of it gets illuminated. And then I'll come in here and I'll make another light, uh, intensity 150. And then I'll make it the color of the sky, I guess, or maybe that cloud over there. And then I'll make it a point light. And now if I press OK, now you see that it illuminates one part. So um, we can just reposition this to make it look good. So there, it looks like the sun's coming from over here. So I can make it like that. And now our, oh, whoops, actually no, the sun's coming from the other side. So we can go like this, and now that looks a bit more realistic. So it looks like the sun's actually coming from over there and lighting up the plane accordingly. So that's that also makes it look realistic. Now the final thing I'm going to add is um, I am going to add something here, which I found on Google Images actually. Um, I'll put it under here. And basically it's just a dirty lens effect. So now if I come here and I make it a bit bigger by holding shift to make it scale properly, um, I will bring it up to the basically the edges of the screen. I'll uh, we'll come here to our elliptical or ellipse tool and I'll mask out a corner like right here. Um, now I can come back and um, go to the blending mode and we can go to add. And then now what this does is it adds as if there's another there's a camera filming you this jet from another plane. So now it adds that more realistic effect. Um, so now we can go under the mask, turn up the feathers a lot, just so that it looks more realistic. And then you have this, which is an awesome plane shot. And pretty slow, I think it's because of the motion blur. I don't, I don't really need the motion blur on at all actually. So yeah, it's pretty good. Um, works really well. Looks, it's a really good looking effect. And yeah, that's basically it for how I make my plane shots in Element 3D. Everyone can make it differently. This is the way I discovered it, and also 
and mostly I got my like I got tutorials from Video Copilot themselves. Uh, you can go on their website at videocopilot.net, and there's a lot of tutorials for JetStrike because this is their program after all, and they know better than anyone else how to use it. So, anyways, that's all the time I got right now. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you all later. Peace.